I'm Intruder Green. You might know me from things like Honorable Swords, St. Lazare, and House Pot. <laughs> Welcome to the Intruder Green Podcast. Uh, it is uh, the 16th of July. Recording this, uh, getting this out a little late. Sorry about that, guys, but it's been a crazy week. And uh, lots of stuff going on. Um, you may have noticed, if you're paying attention to all the social medias and whatnot, I did a thing with uh, Two Minutes to Late Night again. I don't know, for some reason, people seem to act like it's like, the first time I ever did anything with them, which ain't, which it ain't. Uh, we, Mass Intruder did a thing with Fest, uh, a thing with Fest, a thing at Fest with them a few years ago, and then I did one last year. Uh, I guess no, it was two years in a row, so it wasn't a few years ago. It was like two years ago. Anyway, Fest ain't happening this year. Uh, it's official, and that's a bummer. But you know, uh, it was kind of expected, and uh, I'm sure they let people know as soon as they could that it's gonna get moved. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, two minutes to late night. Those guys are great. They're doing a whole lot of, uh, these videos. Uh, and if you don't know about their show, you can go check them out on YouTube. They're like, a kind of like, uh, if Conan O'Brien's old, uh, show was like, uh, hosted by, uh, like a death metal dude. Anyway, uh, they're, they're real fun, uh, real funny people and, uh, they do a good job. Uh, but yeah, now that, uh, they can't really do the regular show so much, they're doing these, like, uh, uh, I don't know what to call them. I, they have, they got a name for it. It's like living room, uh, you know, telecast, whatever you want to call it. That's like an old term. It's like via satellite, <laughs> we're making these, uh, you know, fucking videos. But, uh, I got to be part of that and we did a Guns N' Roses cover of a Bonnie Raitt song. And that's fucking weird. That was hard to do. I was like... This ain't punk rock. This is like crazy shit that I got to figure out how to actually play guitar to do this with. So, uh, you know, it was a fun and interesting experience. And, uh, you know, maybe I uh, improved my guitar skills a little bit while trying to learn it, too. All good stuff. Um, and also, uh, Mrs. K uh, Mrs. Smith was on there again, too. So that was a lot of fun as well. Uh, and Jordan's a great singer. Um, so anyway, check that out on the YouTubes, uh, just go to Two Minutes to Late Night, uh, YouTube channel, and it's like, uh, one of the top videos up there right now, um, and otherwise, you know, just search around, like, all the videos are pretty cool, so you can have, like, a good time watching them all. Um, the other thing is, if you're listening to this on the, uh, you know, when it comes out, or shortly after, before the weekend, basically, is, uh, there's a Bradford 10K run, uh, if you noticed, Officer Bradford's like, we're getting uh, beefed up and getting in shape um, so he can be an extra dickish cop. But also, I guess it's so he can do this, uh, this charity uh, run thing um, for uh, it's for Black Lives Matter and for uh, what's that other thing called? The fucking uh, thing where they give abortions and shit. Uh, Planned Parenthood. That's the one. Um, anyway, I ain't got no producer in here. You know, it's just me. So sometimes when my brain malfunctions like that. Like, pretty much all the time, all right. Uh, yeah, I just have to pause and think about it until it comes to me. Um, and I ain't got no help here, guys. So I'm doing my best. But anyway, that is that is happening on Sunday, the 19th of July. And uh, it's going to be like, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly where to find it. You probably just want to check out Officer Bradford's socials for that. And uh, you can... Uh, Basically, they're like doing donations for this stuff. And it's, you know, I don't know if you ever donated to like somebody running a marathon before, but it could be cool. Um, and uh, word has it that I'm going to be chiming in because it's going to be like a video thing. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I could see it being like where uh, Officer Bradford's wearing his body cam while he's like doing the run. And then uh, I guess it's going to be like hosted by Toby Jeg from Red Scare. And uh, I guess I'm going to be, you know, talking to him as like a guest host or something, which is a lot of fun. I don't know. I think it's going to be a good time. But that starts at, uh, you know, noon central time, which if you're on the East Coast, that will make it 1 o'clock, uh, 1 p.m. your time. And, you know, it goes on and on and on until uh, you get to the West Coast. And if you're in the Europe or the UK, uh, basically tack on six to seven hours to that. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's actually a good time for everybody. It'll be in the evening if you're in, uh, you know, like I said, the UK or the, or the Europe. And it'll be, uh, you know, right around kickoff time uh, if you're in the States. All right. The other thing I uh, needed to talk about is the whole, uh, yeah, the Mass Intruders 
Supermass Intruder 3 Turbo uh, that we released. Uh, you can, I think you can get it on like Spotify and everything. There's no like physical media for it, at least yet. I think uh, it would be cool if we did that, mainly because I would love to have that album artwork with, uh, you know, Super and Turbo attached to it. And basically, uh, it's just like a extended cut of the record that we came out with a couple years ago. And uh, with a couple, with three extra songs. Yeah, that's it. Um, and one of them's a fucking Joan Jett cover. So you really want to check that out. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, just go figure it. We'll, we'll, we'll get like a bunch of money for the, doing that cover probably. Because people will be like, this is make a good single. Let's play it on the radio. And we'll be like, cool. And then we'll have to split it with Joan Jett. Fuck. Anyway, no, that'd be cool. Because uh, if Joan Jett ever knew that we did a cover and was like, uh, said anything about it even even if she even if she said it sucks i'd be like wow that's cool joan jett acknowledged us all right uh but yeah uh it's uh it's, it's good i like the new the the songs we didn't release we had a real hard time uh figuring out what songs to cut from the album uh because you know we didn't want to do i don't know how many how many that makes it like 16 songs or something um you know i don't we don't like to go over like 14 or whatever because then it just gets too long so we had to figure out what to cut, and those songs kind of like, we felt like they were good on their own, but didn't really like make sense in the mix of the album. But then we were like, well, fuck, now nobody's going to hear these songs, and that sucks, but we kind of think they're some of the best stuff we've done, so we got to get them out there, and uh, this was our way to do it. Uh, so yeah, just like in Street Fighter 2, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, you know, you get your, your cami and... Uh, I don't know. What were the other characters? I, I just liked Kim because she was real pretty. Uh, so, but anyway, like, uh, you got you got these uh, extra characters, or with the album, you get extra songs. And uh, that's the way it is. Go find it on the internet and uh, have a good listen. Hope you like them. Uh, yeah. Gotta, gotta give a shout out to the producers of the podcast. We got Luke Ellis, Heather Royston, Gem City Sabrina, Vaughn Cotton, Sarah Koenig, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, and Carlos Hernandez. Thanks again, guys, for, uh, you know, supporting me and everything. Um, I, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out again, you know, it's been a long time coming and I'm trying to make, you know, more content for everybody. Uh, and it would be cool to just do content for the patron patrons. Um, I don't know if you guys would be interested in reading a blog or something, a uh, monthly thing like that. Uh, that's something I've been trying to like wrap my brain around doing. Um, but it's hard to do because my brain ain't too big. So it's like, you know, when you go to wrap a pizza or something because you just got leftovers and you, you don't got too much uh, cellophane or whatever to wrap it in. It's like, yeah, there's not enough material. You need more. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I, I've tried to figure out stuff. But like, you know, the thing is, too, uh, if, if, if we were doing a live stream or something for just the patrons, I don't know. <laughs> it would only be like not that many of us and it would be kind of like, hey, uh, just hanging out <laughs> here with uh, Luke, you know, uh, which would be cool. But it'd be cooler if we have more people to like chime in and stuff. So, uh, you know, get the word out. And, uh, you know, even if people want to get on the Patreon for like a dollar, that's fine. I, I, I appreciate that alone. And uh, if you want to do more, I fucking always love that. You can get on there. Patreon.com slash Judah Green. And I uh, appreciate everything uh, that you guys have uh, been able to throw my way. And I know there's a lot of other important causes to give you money to right now, <laughs> including, you know, this Bradford 10K. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I do got to say there's other things going on in the world that <laughs> even happened before uh, the world kind of exploded uh, during the pandemic. It's real rough for any kind of musician. Uh, and I'm not going to disclude myself from that. But, uh, you know, venues and everything like that. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot of people trying to fucking make things happen as far as that's concerned. And uh, one of them being the, the topic for this new, uh, you know, this, this today's episode, basically. Uh, it was with John Redman from Lovesick Bombs. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing he's doing where he gets artists together to record stuff and then uh he well no he well he gets musicians together to record stuff and he gets the artist to like make a picture for it and it's like one song one picture and then you you know throw it up on a website and on a spotify and all that 
And it's good time. Uh, I did get the uh, art he was trying to send me. And that's nice. So now I got that. Um, and this episode of the podcast, uh, again, is another Melanie K uh, sponsored podcast. I don't know. It's not like she's sponsoring it. It's just made possible by Melanie K. You know, she's a great PR person if you need help uh, in the Canada area or like anywhere, really. Because uh, with the Internet now, everything's international anyway all the time. All right. This one gets a little crazy towards the end because uh, we just started geeking out about gear and like how do you record and stuff. Um, <laughs> so uh, at that point, I was like, holy shit, uh, I don't know if this is going to be entertaining to people. So I had to kind of cut it off. But we still got a lot in there um, as far as like just talking about, you know, the scenes and, you know, making music and whatnot. Uh, so I hope it's enjoyable to everybody. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm on the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... Intruder Green. An inmate at the Neural Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. Ladies and gentlemen, John Redman of Love Sick Bombs on the Intruder Green Podcast. And how are you doing? Where exactly? I don't even know. I tried re- figuring out where exactly you're based out of. Um, at first, I thought Canada because uh, Melanie K hooked this up. But I see New Jersey is like some where some of this stuff is recorded and stuff. Like, where, where are you at? Yeah. So New York City is home. Okay. Um, I live just outside New York City now after uh, 15 years in Brooklyn. Nice. Yeah, I like New yeah. York, but but it's pretty crazy there right now, right? <laughs> it is. It is. And by the crazy, I mean, place. yeah, everybody's going crazy because they can't go outside and do nothing. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Is uh, is New York on fire as much as like some of these other cities uh, with all the protesting and everything? Uh, there was a lot of protest here and, you know, some professional some professionals came in. Uh, a, a friend of mine actually... Uh, uh, drove past a bunch of like presidential size, you know, badass SUVs that were parked in a really strange area. And then later that night found out that they were pre-parked getaway cars for a smash and grab that happened really? in Soho d- during the protest. Yeah. For like looting or something? Like professional? Correct. Yeah. Wow. Like totally, or- totally organized looting. Yeah. Like they knew the pro, they knew the protest was going to pop off and they were professional. Uh, uh, they were professional. Wow, that's crazy to think about. Like, you know, we like to do crimes and stuff, but uh, we're definitely not that nearly that organized about it. Also, I was just having this conversation uh, with the with the previous episode I was doing today, where it's like all these looters and stuff. Now I know that like there's some looters that are just real passionate about everything, and uh, there's some something to be said for that. But uh, you know, a lot of it's just to make the movement look bad or just people taking advantage of the situation. And I would say, like, uh, you know, that's just like a wimpy way to do crimes. You should probably do it when it's actually the stakes are against you, because that shows that you actually care about doing crime. If you're just like lining up to take advantage of the situation, um, that's kind of a stupid and wimpy way to do crimes. So, uh, yeah, but that's they're, crazy. They're tourists. Yeah, they're right. tourists. They're, they're not uh, they're not they're not living. That's right. Um. Yeah, you got to live. You think this is a costume? It's a way of life. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's real good. Um, but yeah, we could get right into it. Uh, you know, Lovesick Bombs is, it's a band, but it's more like a project or what? Uh, I, I, I've, I've definitely checked it out on, on, the, on, a, on your website and everything and the music videos and the artwork. And I, I think it's all really cool. But uh, yeah, t- t- tell me more about it. Yeah, it's hard to explain sometimes. It's uh, Love Sick Bombs is just what I named the Art Collective, which is constantly growing. Um, the series is called Drawing Music, and basically, um, I book shows for years and write, but you know, can't sing and can't play for shit. Oh so yeah, you and me ca- both, bud. I, I, <laughs> I've seen you guys a bunch of times. So you're solid. <laughs> um, 
I, uh, so I tapped a bunch of, uh, uh, musicians from bands I'm I'm fans of. So the lead singer of Habits, the lead singer of Van Saders, the drummer from Night Surf, who's on Wiretap Records. Um, they put out a record I love. Um, the female lead piano player of this indie pop band called Blank Paper. So I just got a, a bunch of musicians together, gave them my crappy songs. They turned them into, you know, awesome collaborations. Yeah. And then I took those pieces of music and then commissioned artists I'm a fan of to do original pieces of art based on those songs. So there is no band. And then, you know, I just, I'm constantly trying to find new artists and new musicians to work with to keep the series rolling. So I had a badass Airbnb uh, rented in Brooklyn with a week's worth of studio time and had a bunch more musicians and uh, other people returning to do another round of recordings and, and art outreach. But, you know, COVID kind of snipped that. So that's getting rescheduled. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'll put a fucking huge damper yeah. on this kind of thing. That's crazy. Oh, yep. uh, yeah. You know, it's like it, it's fucking everything up. Everybody's uh, canceling tours and everything. And uh, yep. yeah, that 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 kind of project is so specific but yeah you kind of gotta have everybody in the same place although i know some people are trying to do it like with remote recordings have you thought about doing stuff like that or is it more like you want to have control over it uh as far as yeah. like, doing it in your own space i mean obviously the artists don't have to be in the same room but a big part of uh th there's no way for people who don't play in the same band to collaborate yeah. You know, I mean, maybe if you already play in a band and you have a way of working with each other, but sure, it would definitely gotta, be a lot they've harder. Got, they've got to be in drinking beers, hanging out, <laughs> yeah. and that's definitely the best way to do it, so they can get it recorded. Oh yeah. yeah, for sure, I believe that to be true, definitely. Um, yeah, and and then so like, uh, so so it's is it like completely on hold at this point? Are you just trying to figure out a new way to do it, or like maybe a different location, like? <laughs> You're going to go out of state no, or something? Got, no, I have songs in the can and I have more art um, getting created. Um, you know, what I'd love to get out on, on your podcast, by the way, thanks for having me. Um, is Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I, I've got more songs than I have art right now. So I'm, doing, I'm running a contest to commission the next. I don't know if you call it a contest. It's more like outreach, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, if... Uh, uh, anybody sends me lovesickbombs at gmail.com. If you send me some sketches, basically if uh, I'll send you the, I'll send you the upcoming music that's set to, to come out. If you're inspired by it to do some sketches, I pay 50 bucks for the sketches. And then if, if one of the, then when one of the sketches gets picked, I pay a couple hundred bucks to finish, you know, to commission the final piece of art. Yeah. Uh, and then that, you know, that just continues the series. So nice. My end, my end goal, really, what I'm trying to do is launch an art label so that the art doesn't have to be tied to specific songs. Okay. Um, and I'm, hope, I'm hoping with the outreach, I'm going to find a bunch of new graphic artists that I'm a fan of and continue the drawing music series as soon as, you know, uh, kind of I plan on doing it forever, quite frankly, just keep cranking out songs with uh, bands I'm fans of yeah. and commissioning art. But I want to put out art independently as well Yeah. in the interim. That's actually, that's pretty interesting. I never really thought about that. How like, you know, I got some friends that are like artists and stuff and, uh, you know, they, they make art and they, they get money where they can, but I never really thought of the idea of an art label. Um, is that something that like exists or you, is this kind of like a completely original thing? Cause I kind of really never heard about that before. No, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely art houses for yeah. sure. It, but in the last, you know, over the last years, everybody, the, you know, the democratization of art in general, everybody can go to rec. So there are yeah, bad that's true. ass artists just on Etsy. Sure. But I guess the, the, artist, the, the thing about having like a label is that you kind of have that collective, uh, you know, it's like uh, being on fat records. Like even if you yeah. could do it all by yourself, which, you know, any band can market their own music by themselves these days, but being part of a label gives you like the resources and like sort of like, the, the 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 branding i guess is part of it too and uh you know like people people you want to find a cool band you go on fat records website and uh, you find it there you know like something like that exactly so doing well, it with, that that's like the point of the label I'm, right yeah and that's why i'm that i mean that's why even though i don't draw or i don't uh play um i am the curator of it because i'm hoping to find people who share my sense that they like the same kind did the art show up by the way i heard customs on your end takes a long ass time 
Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I haven't received anything yet, but uh, I, okay. hope I haven't even like not even a notification or anything. Um, okay. which they usually don't, and sometimes you got to pay extra money. Actually, if anybody's listening, I don't know how you sent uh the art. Uh, in case anybody who's listening, uh, John sent me some artwork. Uh, and I'm I'm stoked to get it. Uh, but yeah, man, customs is fucking weird. Uh, if you send it through the regular mail, it can be even worse. Mm-hmm. It's best to go through like the private companies. Unfortunately, like I think uh, the U.S. mail system is pretty cool. But as far as sending stuff internationally, and I probably should have said something earlier. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, DHL is real big over here. And uh, even FedEx, although, you know, say what you want about FedEx. They're kind of a weird company. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> haven't, yeah. haven't so, gotten it yet, but I hope I'm, I'm excited to. Oh, great. Yeah, and so the idea is, you know, there is a collective sound um, because I'm choosing the the bands. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm writing the songs, but they're coming out, you know, the way the bands put the the artists put their spin on them in the in the studio. Yeah, and and then I'm I'm commissioning the art, so kind of exactly kind of like Fat Records. I'm hoping to find people that share the same sensibilities on the rock and roll as well as on the the art prints. Oh yeah, for sure. And I've, you know, like I said, I checked some of it out. I've, I've listened to a bunch of the songs. I don't know exactly how many songs there are, but I was, I, th- I think I might've listened to all of them. Um, and, uh, the production is real good. Are you doing all the mixing and everything too yourself? No, no. Okay. There's a guy here in Brooklyn named Jesse Cannon. Yeah. He did, uh, he did like the drums on a couple saves the day records. Oh, nice. He just has a, he's got a bulletproof uh, set up for, you know, a, an amateur like me in terms of what he could just get in. You don't go in and reinvent the sound every time his studio would, I made a bunch of records with Ryan green as a much younger man. Yeah. Um, but you know, Ryan green just had that motor studio sound. Jesse cannon has just a pre set up that if you like, if you like what he knows how to crank out, he can do anything, but he's got a specific sound that he can do out of his studio. Um, which I am a huge fan of the the records that he puts out of that studio. So uh, we get in, get out. The you know I can crank out like uh, four or five songs in a weekend with well, uh, oh, he, yeah. people learning them and smashing through them because he's just super efficient. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, and it's yeah, it's, it, it you you you're doing some pretty diverse stuff too. Like obviously that's going to happen when you're working with different artists. But like mm-hmm. even as far as the production goes, I noticed on it. I think it was was it called Freedom. Is that the song yeah. um, where you got like kind of like, I don't know what to call it, almost like a jazzy doo part and yeah. uh, some 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 different uh, instruments going on there. So, uh, you know, and it sounds like real fresh and real uh, like clean and nice, um, but still like plenty of like power in the punk rock parts that I, I don't know. That might have been that might so far be like my favorite uh, one that I heard uh, just because it's got such such so many different sounds going on. And uh, nothing is like lacking. Like the punk rock sounds real good and heavy and hard um, and driving. And then you go into the the, the fucking uh, <laughs> yeah, that, so the that big band part. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like big band jazz yeah. kind of. And uh, it it sounds so good though. Like it's it, it's really well done. So uh, you know, I, props I, to I you and uh, Jesse on on all of that. And that's that's completely out of the fact that. that so the front half of the song is it's a rage against the machine cover redone as kind of a power pop song in the beginning. Ah, okay. And then when it cha- when it changes over, it's actually changing over on all the, on all the musicians. So the beginning was, you know, this mixture of the Van Saders guys and night surf and habit. And then the whole second half of that song is a group called eight verse chick. They're a husband and wife jazz duo hmm. that do punk rock covers in broken down jazz. So they do smoking popes, get up kids, oh, but shit. they do them in jazz. And yeah, they're my awesome. Like I want to manage them and just put them on <laughs> uh, cocktail hours. Like if you go into a punk rock bar and there's just a piano player and, and singer. Oh, so, yeah. uh, that, yeah, they did the right. whole, that whole outro with the, where it changes into a girl singer. That's a group called eight verse chick out of Brooklyn who did the whole second half of the song. I'm going to have to uh, check Definitely check out more of them um, because, yeah, I like that stuff a lot. I also do the Intruder Green Cocktail Hour sometimes on Saturdays. Life has been crazy lately, so I haven't been doing it as much. But that would be like perfect background music for something like that. Yeah, the guy, um, the piano player, he was in Second Shot. Uh, 
who was a band out we were in 20 years ago um who did a bunch of ryan green stuff you know our our desperate attempt to try to be on fat we moved from oh yeah we moved from kalamazoo michigan to san francisco you know chasing fat records and doing records with ryan but now that guy does all piano he kind of quit guitar and singing oh yeah. and he's a full-time he's a full-time piano player um and he goes by lonely bunker so he's got the lonely bunker eight verse chick and then he still has a, a couple punk rock bands but he does he does but he's you know phenomenally talented on piano oh that sounds amazing um yeah i love you know it's so funny like you know i always tell people hey i got into punk rock because it's easy and then you find out about all these other like people who are actually good at playing the instruments that are playing punk rock and it's like oh shit i guess i better yeah. like stop practicing <laughs> yeah. Well, that was always the, the hardest thing is as soon as you found a good drummer, they didn't want to play punk rock, you know? Yeah, you're right. So, you're so lucky to find an awesome drummer because as soon as they're good, they want to play metal or, or you know, or, or only play traditional jazz or something. Yeah, it's so, true. You know, yeah. Every time you meet a punk rock drummer, they're in like five bands because they're just so vital. Yeah, well, even in True to Red, like he's a pretty good drummer. And, yep. uh, you know, like uh, we got a certain style to our music. Um, that's kind of like, you know, we're like, Hey Red, play the Ramones beat. And Red's like, wait, I, I played the Ramones beat for the last song. And we're like, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> you know what band again. you're in? Do it again. <laughs> and he's like, well, can I do something like crazy and fancy? We're like, no, that's too much. You know, stop doing that. Um, so yeah, I get that. Like he would probably like to be in some kind of metal band or hardcore band or something where he can do like all sorts of double kick stuff and whatnot. But anyway, yeah. Um, so, in you said uh, you're still looking for artists, like new more artists to be on this, like as far as uh, musicians or like actual, like you said you're doing a contest for actual art, but like you're looking for yeah. musicians and stuff too. Uh, the musicians, uh, musicians, I'm contacting directly. I mean, in my daydream, I want to get this to a point. I really want to get, um, I really want to get James from Against Me singing oh, yeah. lead vocal. All right. I, but like, you know, what I want to do is, is get the budget at a level where I can go out and, and start grabbing people who I've listened to, you know, not just in the New York, you know, uh, touring area, yeah. but some like major heavy hitters and uh, that the musicians I'll continue to reach out to. But the artists, you know, I stumble into new artists all the time that I'm a huge fan of. I love this dude, Ghost Bat. Um, that did the the artwork for the 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 latest one that it's got the house on fire. It's oh yeah, out of love. That's that's um, perfect timing for I'm that a too. Huge, huge fan of his art, and I and I just stumbled into him, and it's and I'm I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of how many more people I can find. So the contest or the outreach really is going to be on the graphic art. So again, if anybody emails me at lovesickbombs at gmail dot com, I'll send you the songs that are unreleased um, and they can do uh, uh, original sketches, which I pay for. I don't, I don't, I'm never trying to rip anybody off or take people's time without compensating them. Right. Um, but I, I do a full blown commission of the art. Um, and then it, you know, comes out with the song and, and, and goes up, you know, and I'm shipping them all over the world now, which is pretty, pretty awesome. That is awesome. And, uh, so you're shipping them all over the world. Are people get, I assume people are getting like prints or something. Like, I don't even know what That's you sent right. me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Is you going to send me a painting? That's awesome. But I wasn't really expecting that. No, I get that. to keep the original. <laughs> this is yeah. all a selfish project because the originals are on my wall. Oh, yeah. Else gets burnt. That's good. Until, yeah. Until somebody <laughs> like rips them off and sells them for a million dollars. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just email me your exact address and i'll get back to you on net um but uh yeah <laughs> my art will be gone <laughs> that's right um but you know uh, before that happens you know we got to get rid of this uh coronavirus stuff because I, I ain't traveling on no planes to steal some art right now <laughs> but uh, uh agree <laughs> so like uh but fuck was i gonna ask uh hey you want you want to hear a, my crime you want to hear a, a, my favorite crime story oh sure do that I would love to. Hear on my that. on my twenty seventh birthday, I walked out to my car in San Francisco. Uh, I took the day off work with my girl. She took the day off work. We're going down to the Monterey Aquarium, you know, for the day just to uh, chill. Yeah. She got she got to the car, turned around and said, "Don't go to the car. Don't go to the car." And I was like, you know, God damn it, to get broke into again because this is uh, two thousand two, yeah. right? San Francisco was, you know, cars just got broke into all the time. Sure. Uh, and, 
not only I rush up to my car on my birthday, not only had my car gotten broke into again, yeah. uh, the person spent the night and took a giant heroin addict pine cone shit oh. in my car, then wiped their ass with my parking ticket and dip. Wow. On my <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> That's that my is, favorite crime story. That is a total bummer. And uh, <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't your favorite birthday. It was, uh, no, I didn't actually even want the car anymore. And then I drove around San Francisco for like three months, you know, staring down different people thinking, is this the guy who shit in my car? Yeah. Oh, man. That's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's maddening. I mean, you know, like, uh, did they steal shit? They broke into your car. Did they actually like rip you off? Yeah. Like 75 cents in, in, in change. Oh, and shit. A, so and, they didn't like steal a, your and stereo or nothing. A place to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, I've heard about that. Uh, a buddy's uh, I Farm uh, band from New York actually. Uh, they're not really active anymore, um, but uh, they had a van back in. Uh, it, this this was in like Williamsburg before it got like the way it is now, and uh, yeah. they had their van parked outside. And like on a regular basis, people would break into it for a place to sleep and like live in it for a day or two. And uh, yeah, take a dump in there, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's a fucked uh, up. I saw thing. you guys uh, last time. I saw you guys, by the way, was with uh, Pears here in New York. Uh, oh yeah, that was, a, that, that was a killer show. Was yeah. that a fun tour? That was absolutely a fun tour. Um, who the fuck else were we with? It wasn't just Pears. Oh, it was me, that. It was me first. Yeah, that's right. Oh uh, man, we love me first, and we love Pears. Oh, that all those guys like. That's that's one of the that was things. A great tour. Yeah, <laughs> you telling me, but uh, it was a lot of fun. How long ago was that though? That was a while ago. Cause uh, I mean, the last time we played New York, I think was either on our own or within the Interrupters. That had to have been at least like show. two years ago. Yeah. yeah, all right. It was probably two years ago. Yeah, that sounds Maybe. right. That's true. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, Pears are cool. They they just come out with a new album. I think well, not too long ago, but uh, yeah. Love those guys. Love me first. We were, I mean, it's not me first, but we were supposed to be touring with Lagwagon, who's got members of me first in it, uh, last month. And obviously that got canceled and rescheduled and canceled again. Uh, so, you know, that's where we're at. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get back to New York one of these days because we love playing there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice city when it's, when it's cool. Nothing's cool right now in <laughs> yeah. the States. I'm not fucking like, I want to tour in the States, but fuck not right now. <laughs> Things are a little crazy. It, things are a little crazy. It's good. It's, it's a good crazy for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. Like the coronavirus shit that just sucks. Like there's no way around yep. that. It's a bummer in, and especially now, like I hear that, you know, it's funny. Cause like when the protest started, all the conspiracy theorists were like, oh, well, obviously, uh, coronavirus was a big hoax after all because we're not seeing shit uh, spike and nobody cares no more about that. It's not in the news. And I'm like, well, yeah, because more important things are happening right now. We covered coronavirus. You know what you need to do. And sure enough, now they're saying like, oh, yeah, everything's spiking again because everybody's going out in public. But I do believe that uh, it's important enough to... Uh, uh, take some risks, I guess, and unfortunately, it's going to keep the pandemic going longer, and people got to fucking stay aside more. But you know, th you got two things going on at once, and uh, they're both equally, uh, or not even equally. I think uh, the whole uh, protests and even the riots and everything is just—it's—it's it's very important. And uh, unfortunately, it happened during a pandemic. Yep. Well, we got Captain Chaos at the helm, making everything worse all the time. That's right. So. Um, and I was actually just talking about this. I know people, the, the people who listen to this podcast are going to hate it because I just did one, uh, with, uh, <laughs> uh, Western addiction before this. And they, we, we, we talked about some of the same stuff, but how like, uh, somebody else was saying to me that they think Donald Trump is real good for America. And I was like, are you fucking crazy? And they're like, no, listen to me. It's like, you guys needed, uh, cause this person was not from America and he's like, you guys needed uh, basically like an arch villain to fucking actually unite against, you know? And uh, yeah, I thought about absolutely. that. I'm like, yeah, because, you know, it's always like uh, kind of watered down. Like if you had like a real politician guy running the show, they probably would have been a little bit more uh, 
I don't know, scheming and conniving about how they did things. But he's just such a fucking asshole that, uh, like, you know, obviously he's got his followers that, for the most part, are also assholes. But, yeah, he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, he's real easy to hate. Absolutely. And I, I, I kind of like the idea, uh, you know, you need a full collapse to get things actually started. Not the kind of change he wants. Right. But the kind of change he's actually bringing. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to work with a guy, super educated African-American guy many years ago, and he was like full bore uh, Bush. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then he explained to me that he and all of his friends were pushing Bush because they wanted the collapse. Right. They didn't want somebody to get up and pretend they wanted to push it all the way. You know, they you, that I, I would imagine I haven't talked to him in years now, but I would imagine that. Yeah, he's he loving Trump. Yeah, that because he the the kind of change that Trump is affecting isn't the change he wants, but it's the change that a lot of people want. Yeah, it's kind of like that whole Batman thing. It's like he's not the one we want, but he's what we need or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, taking your medicine and then you fucking fight the fever, and the fever is what actually sucks, but it's what you got to go through to get better. Yeah, I, I would like to say something you triggered that made me think of something you said earlier. One, Lagwagon's my all-time favorite band. Oh, uh, nice. And it, I, I, I don't know how many people follow One re, one Week Records, but that's that's my shit. Oh, yeah. Um, Chris Cresswell put out a record on One Week Records that I think is the best acoustic record of the last 20 years um it's constantly in in spin for me so i love one week records i love chris cresswell's record on there i think is insanely good like just unbelievably good yeah. um, and i was fortunate enough uh i did a rewrite of all my rowdy friends and i was fortunate enough for chris cresswell uh to perform it which would be one of the songs if people want to hear it that's one of the songs that i would be emailing out before it uh comes out because i don't have any art for it oh shit well, yeah, that sounds fucking super cool. Um, and and that's awesome, like that you're able to like do rewrites and stuff and uh put it out there because I feel like that's real important. Um, and people might not even know about how like the production process goes when you're in the studio, but there's so much rewriting that goes on outside of the band if you have a good producer. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Maybe that's what uh you know. Obviously, that's that is what you're doing, but uh, that's a cool ass thing to be a part of. Right. Well, coming up in the Midwest when everything was metal, it sucked because it was like he had jocks at school. And then until I yeah. found punk rock, then all, there was like uh, musical athleticism, right? If uh, I'm, I'm in my 40s, right? So it was like just speed metal assholes who couldn't write a song. Yeah. And I, I didn't connect. I didn't connect with any of it. So it felt like jocks at school and jocks in music, which is what I loved about punk rock. Oh yeah, and what I love about this project is I, you know, I, I plan on being an, an old ass man and continuing to put out protest art and music, even though I'm a, I can't do any of it for shit, <laughs> right? Um, so um, I'm hoping to get as many people involved. So um, if you if, if you write songs, if you're in a punk rock band, if you're uh, if you're an artist, I'm I'm looking to uh, uh, build the Lovesick Bombs, you know, collective out with as many. Uh, people who I I think their shit as good as I can. Yeah, I I like that, and I and I again I love the idea of uh, you know doing the doing the the art label thing, and uh, or maybe you call it an art house. But is your idea for the label different than an art house situation? Because I mean that's a, it's just like the terminology there. I'm not really familiar with. Um, no, it's all the same. Yeah, right. But it's just. For, quite frankly, it's just lowbrow, right? Okay. Uh, is I, I, I'm, I'm a, I want the art prints to be in, you know, anytime I travel, I, I hit up comic book, comic book shops, and I just say, oh, Here, hell yeah. charge, whatever you, charge whatever you want for these, keep the money, just put them out, right? So I just, I donate, I give the art away to comic book shops um, huh. for them just to get some money off it and to get it out there. That's where, that's where I see this type of stuff being, right? Uh, you know, it's not, it's not so sit back and look at forever even though i love that kind of art too but the stuff i have up on my walls is all pop art and yeah and kind of com comic book driven well i like that you bring that up because uh you know i went to a comic con once i mean i've been to a few i went to ones like uh you know uh back in the day before they were like huge the way they are now and uh that was basically just a few comic book vendors in a in a hotel lobby like selling their shit and it was like, cool, I got, I got a lot of options to buy comic books here. 
And, uh, you know, um, but then I went to one recently and, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily my bag. And, uh, but I feel like there's a weird, it's like, there's a weird, I don't know what to call it, but it's like, you know how magnets are where you got like one side and they push against each other. But if you flip it over, they're fucking attracted to each other. And I feel like that's the way punk rock and comic books are because it's like, I know plenty of people who are into punk rock and also comic books. I don't necessarily know a whole lot of people who are into comic books first and then also punk rock, but I feel like there should be a good relationship there. And I also know that like from some of my friends who do comic books or like are in that industry, there's some like less than woke stuff that goes on in that industry. And I feel mm-hmm. like if, 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 you know, maybe yourself or like other people were able to bridge that gap between punk rock and comic books, punk rock could actually have a like real cool influence on comic books because of the whole like, I guess, uh, community, sort of like more woke community that is punk rock, uh, kind of, uh, you know, breaching or like cr- creeping into the, to the comic book scene. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's all just, it's all rooted in nerd culture, right? Yeah. Whether it's, that's what, uh, I think that's kind of the shared thread of, uh, not a ton of Johnny football stars. Yeah, that's uh, right. Um, going to comic cons and, and, and ripping up punk rock shows, but they could, and you know, whatever they, they'd be well, welcome. And that's the thing. Um, like, I think a lot of, uh, Johnny football stars would be into it, but you know, they're, they, they're where they come from. Like, uh, you know, they, they can't be considered a nerd, but they would be like, you know, they maybe take do a double take when they see like a cool comic book or like hear a cool band they like, but they're like, oh no, nope, that's not for me because I'm I gotta go play football and the guys in the locker room will like uh, you know call me the f word if I uh, you know get into <laughs> yeah. any of this other stuff. But it's like yeah, you know, you, you mix it up enough and it becomes a big thing. That's why I think it's kind of cool that comic books are such a mainstream thing now. Um, and even like the same thing with punk rock where people are like. Oh, that band sold out. Oh, Green Day's too big now. And I'm like, well, fucking, what would you rather have? They never got known by anybody. And never made any money. Like, I think no, it's that's, kind yeah, of yeah, that's an exhaust. That that, especially coming up in the '90s, the idea of of, of selling out. You know, if you believe yeah. in the art you're making, you want it in everybody's hands. And and the best too is what you realize you get a few years under your belt is the person screaming sellouts, wearing like Nike shoes and working yeah. at Target. Yeah, that's you right. Know, like, okay, you know? dude. <laughs> yeah. Guitar players, I bet you thought you were shit out of luck when it comes to finding your dream guitar or amp. You know, you go on some auction site or something, and it's all crap. <laughs> yeah, well that's because, you know, you gotta look in the right place. And the right place is Yeah Man's Vintage and Used Guitars. They got exactly what you're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't they located in like Switzerland or something? Yeah man, they are. Burn Switzerland to be exact. But you know, you can, um... Uh, Get on the internet and you can go check out the website, yeahmansguitars.com, and uh, you can order stuff on there. So, uh, you know, it don't really matter where the heck you are in the world. You can just get on their website and uh, find all sorts of cool stuff that you're looking for. And you might not even know that you wanted it until you see it on there, and there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you got something specific you're looking for and need some help finding it, just hit up Yeah Man Guitars on the electronic mail. That's the email. It's like 21st century, and you got email and websites. It's like amazing. Some people would call it magic. Some people would call it science. I just call it, I don't know, crazy shit. Uh, Yeahmansguitars at gmail.com. As far as email goes, it's the way you email them. And while you're at it, get your band a tour in Europe and stop by the shop. Michael and the rest of the crew would love to meet you, I'm sure. And you could tell them Green sent you. Yeah, man's vintage and used guitars. Hi, Intruder Maniacs. Are you in a band? The answer is, of course you are. Everybody's in a fucking band these days. Anyway, if you're in a band, congratulations. I'm making the worst financial decision of your life, aside from taking out college loans or something. Yeah. Now, there is a way to lessen the burden of such a financial decision. It's called merchandising. And Stupid Rap Merch Company is all ready to meet your merchandising needs. You want uh, some t-shirts? Uh, you want got a tight deadline you need them printed on? And because you booked a tour less than a month out and uh, didn't get canceled like everybody else's tours did, 
Uh, how about a bunch of weird random trinkets like keychains or medallions and what about koozies? You know, like everybody likes koozies. Koozies are great because they keep your drink cold and your hand warm or vice versa depending on what you're drinking. Stupid Red Merch Company can get all these made for you. Stupid Red Merch Company is an in-house artist who can help you with your designs and stuff. They're still a small enough company that uh, they pay special attention to you and your special needs because, you know, everybody's got special needs. Like, uh, you know, you probably mostly. And uh, they even got a web store. That's where the real magic is. You go on tour and you sell your stuff, but chances are you're going to have some left over or some fans are going to feel like left out because they didn't have enough money to buy something at your show. So they go on a stuporedmerch.com and find stuff from your band on there. They'll take care of all your production and shipping fulfillment needs. So go ahead, go on a Stupid Red Merch Company web store right now and uh, check out all the tight bands that are already on there. They got a bunch of them like uh, the Bomb Pops and like the Bad Cop, Bad Cop and stuff. It's all good. Uh, yeah. Uh, all sorts of cool swag. And uh, right now, right now, if you go on there and you, at checkout, you use the code PRISON, you can get 15% off. All of the uh, Stupid Red merch branded apparel uh, at stupidredmerch.com. Go check it out. StupidRedMerch.com. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I realize there are some bands who like completely change their their music just to make uh, more money. Um, and, but at the same time, it's like. Fucking, they still created some cool shit in the early on to, to get to where they are. And if they'd want to, like, I don't know, I be, I guess that, that could be called selling out. I almost would like to call it, like, early early retirement. <laughs> because they're just like, all right, go in the studio. Producer, tell me what to do. All right, there's your album. I'm going to go back home and, like, uh, you know, drink whiskey well, on, the, on the pool. Yeah, I, well, I think about it all the time. You had the choice of sitting at a cubicle. Uh, as a junior accountant yeah. or playing playing guitar on tour with Poison in the <laughs> late 80s. Um, yeah. Nobody wants to play guitar in Poison, but would you rather play guitar for a li- and tour yeah. uh, successfully or sit and be a junior accountant in the cubicle? I mean, I think, you know, you got, you got, sometimes people got to pick their battles. And I also see when you actually dig into these bands that change their sound, it always comes with when they have kids. The world, the real world, comes smashing in. You throw that a punk rock emergency break on oh, when yeah. you got serious mouths to feed. Sure, I believe that to be true. <laughs> that that I mean, that's you. Every time you see a band go, hey, they had a little hit. Now they're just trying to go for hits. Oh, look, the singer had a kid. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. The, the other thing I'm always thinking about too. Uh, I don't know if you ever run across this. Is how many bad ass artists and bands there are who kill live write awesome songs but they but that's all they're good at and what it takes to be like you guys is you're are you're you're you guys can tour successfully and that you know booking shows in san francisco and booking shows in brooklyn yeah. you just see so many so much talent but you have it's it, it's not just how good you write the songs um or even play live you have to get on the road and there's just people you have to be good at everything yeah. you have to be you have to be good at you have to be good at touring and there's people who aren't. Yeah, you know, um, I'm lucky enough to be in a band with like some really fucking good musicians, I gotta say. And, uh, you know, we've all been uh, from the beginning kind of like uh, ready for the road, um, I guess. And that is an important thing. Like, you gotta fucking do it. Um, maybe that's gonna change with the way, uh, <laughs> you know, in the current situation and not really knowing when it's gonna end. Um, I don't know, you know, what the... Uh, long-term impact of that is going to be on the whole scene but yeah it's huge like you gotta you know Ma- mass intruder used to play basement shows and uh Fuck yeah we kind of can't play basement shows anymore and that's like a double-edged sword because sometimes like i'm like man some of those basement shows were tight as fuck i wish we could do that again um but you know like now the agents got to get paid and everything um but you know being on the road is is as fun as it is uh, in certain ways, it's 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 also grueling, and uh, you know, fucking shit happens. There's always fucking weird shit. Plus, we're not like rock stars or anything. We still got to fucking you know struggle to like make sure uh, we can put all the 
We can buy all the merch we need and fucking get the the van uh, to the next place and everything. So business, it's I mean there's there's a there's a component of it where uh, you know you just see so many that that's that's the thing. I just have I looked at uh, I got to be a junior booker just for food. It wasn't like my career or anything, but I just I was into it. So uh, at bottom of the hill in San Francisco, Ursula. Oh, put fucking on love show. that club! Hell yeah. So I, I booked, I got to book Mondays and to the shit Monday and Tuesday nights, but then I'd get rewarded with like, I could put together my own show. So I reach, you know, I would reach out and I booked Nerf Herder. I booked Swinging Utters. I booked these bands I just really wanted to see. Yeah. Um, but I was a school teacher. I just did it because this putting, putting shit together is, is, is what I'm into. Right. Um, and, and, uh, the, the seeing so many other bands come through that were, you know, or, or, or local to the Bay area that frigging they just killed but they also would drink themselves to death oh, if yeah. they if they, if they did 10 road 10 days on the road 10 days later there'd be no band yeah you know what i mean i believe that to be true i i i, I love the, the the internet for pushing music out though uh during this time i remember the i literally remember the day on the pop punk message board that somebody posted your guys is uh incriminating evidence uh oh. either incriminating evidence or first offense like i remember that hitting the, the pop punk message board yeah. uh uh and just like exploding which was great because it was all in the songs you know everybody ended up coming out to see you tour but uh, i do love that about the internet that you know you don't touring i still think is the most important thing for a band to do uh but it was awesome that you know, the, there are these pockets of, of, of getting art out there. Like um, somebody dropped your guys' link on that on that uh, board a million years ago, and it just was like everybody grabbed it. If you were into that type of shit, if you were into if you were a Ramones core type of person. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, pop punk message board was all about that stuff. Um, I was never on there too much because I feel like there was always like weird drama that was going on. So I was like, I'm just going to stay away from that. But, uh, I did hear a lot about it. Our buddy Dave was doing a lot of stuff on there and, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's like, uh, the internet for, for, for pushing anything really is these days, it just keeps getting better and better at it. And, uh, obviously, you know, that's a double edged sword too, because there's like information out there. That's like, you know, eh, filling people's heads with shit. Um, but also like you can buy some cool shit directly from bands and stuff, or even, yeah, like you said, you get the link and you can just download shit and now like streaming music, um, another double edged sword for bands because you know, bands, that's the thing back in the nineties, everybody was buying CDs and that was like a golden age because it was like CDs are super cheap, but you sell them for the same prices like you would have record back then. And, uh, you know, bands were cleaning up and now it's like. Eh, it's just all basically free. Oh, cool. I guess. Yep. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time, for a band who's not making any money anyway, uh, you know, that's kind of cool because you could just put your stuff out there and be like, hey, check it out. And it's all, all somebody has to do is click on it and be like, oh, I hate this band <laughs> or I like this band <laughs> or whatever, you know? Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, uh, the, the platform. Yeah. And the problem is so much shit. Yeah. Uh, um, I think there's more there's more music getting released every day. So, you know, that trusted, you know, like trusted curation. Yeah. I feel like labels are more important than ever. Like I'm a huge fan of Wiretap. I like everybody. I don't know. I'm no, I don't know the owner. I don't know them at all. I'm just a fan. Uh, but the owner, Rob, whatever, whatever he grew up on, I grew up on the same shit. So when he signs bands, I'm immediately on them because I know I'm going to I'm going to like it. Yeah, you know? I feel like that's a huge thing. Uh, thing that's important for labels these days and it's gonna it's interesting how uh that industry has had to change because now you, you know even just to produce an album like if you know what the fuck you're doing with pro tools you can just fucking do it you know like you don't have to necessarily have a studio although it does help in uh everything but like a lot of punk rock dudes also work in studios and you can just fucking make an album for relatively cheap compared to how you had to do it you know even 10 years ago uh, so like you fucking can do that on your own, like as a band and make it happen. So it's not necessarily up to the label to like be the bank, you know, like that's the whole thing with like getting uh record deals and stuff in the past. It's like, oh, they're going to spend a shit ton of money on this album. So it'll sound real good and we'll make all these music videos for it. And there's like a production budget and everything. 
bands can kind of market themselves these days. So it's kind yeah. of the up for the uh, to the uh, you know the labels to sort of change uh, what they're doing to fucking matter still. And I think that you yeah. know being curators and uh, you know just supporting the artists in different ways is uh, it's important and uh, it's cool that a lot of labels realize that and are getting on board with it. Yeah, and you, then it's just fighting that technology sound, right? It, it, oh that's yeah, the, that, that's the slippery slope, like. My favorite records recently, I, I've got a daughter, so I play almost exclusively girl-fronted music just because, you know, um, I want her growing up with the, the woman being in charge of the rock and roll band. Oh, hell yeah. But, uh, so, the Lippies, have you listened to the Beths from New Zealand? Do you know who the Beths are? No, I haven't heard of them. Goddamn, just perfect pop punk bangers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will check they're, it they're, out. They're, put out a, they, they're putting out a new album in three weeks. They're they're what I listen to the most of the, right now. The Beth, but the Lippies like the name and, and Beth. The Beth. Yeah, yeah. All right, the name Beth. Yeah, and they, the Lippies, they, the Lippies back on Red and their Scare. Record, their records sound like records. Like your records sound like records. And the slippery slope with some of the younger bands is it's just like, God damn it, I cannot listen to this. It sounds like techno to me. Oh yeah, so, with the production. Because the technology has gotten so good that yeah. it kills me. Like you got Jeff Rosenstock on this side. <laughs> where it's just like motherfucker put a boom box in the corner of the room and I still like the record. Yeah. And then you've got on the other side where these kids ears have been trained into perfection at a level that they don't know that they're stripping the heart out of their songwriting. Yeah, it's true. I hear a lot of stuff like that. And even like, uh, you know, the kind of shit that it, it, it wins awards for like production these days. And I'm like, really? Cause I kind of liked it better. Uh, before when you could hear actual acoustics and stuff like yeah. you know like yeah. i've done some recordings just for demo purposes where you know you go through like a you know they got apps that you can put on a phone and stuff where it like modulates an amp or whatever and like yep. you, you could go right into your computer and you know it sounds great for a demo but like uh and you actually i mean when it comes to guitar it might be fine but when it comes to like drums I don't know, man. Sometimes, sometimes drums these the, drum sounds drums are just are the, gross. The yeah, like you. Yeah, I, I totally want. Agree. I want to hear drums that sound like they're in a room. You know, like you yeah. might. And, and, and I'm sure there are plenty of recordings where I hear it, and it's all like samples and whatever. But you know, the 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 engineer uh, and the producer are good enough to like figure out how to EQ it and uh, add the right effects to make it sound. You know, like it's a drummer playing in a room. And, uh, but that doesn't always happen. A lot of times it just, yeah, it sounds gross. It sounds like, uh, techn- Yeah. The, the, the home recording has almost gotten, or the recording's almost gotten too good. Yeah. Um, so good shit. it's bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Agreed. <laughs> well, I'm sure there will be a backlash at some point. I mean, there probably already is. There's plenty of bands like still doing like oh we're just gonna be like a garage rock band and be real fucking sludgy i feel like grunge was kind of coming back for a while but i don't know if it really stuck like grunge bands you know um, i love how i love how the mark men and radioactivity i love how their records sound oh yeah that's right i, I, I don't know i i couldn't write it and i couldn't i couldn't replicate it in the studio but i, I fucking love how those albums sound yeah those sound it's like it's 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 actually kind of for me uh, I'm glad you brought that up because now it reminds me that I feel like there's a, almost like a golden age that could be happening for bands like that because uh, like the new recordings, obviously they're using like the new technology and everything, but they're still finding a way to make it sound cool. And, you know, when you have complete control, it's hard not to go like all in one way and make it sound like, you know, like we were saying techno, but they, they're they doing it where it's like, it still sounds cool. Like they cut, they got like, Cool it. guitar tones that are obviously coming out of an amp, and uh, you know the drums—they don't—they don't sound perfect. It sounds awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's so—it's so easy to obsess. Yeah, on the uh, obsess on when reamping got introduced to me, yeah. where you can dry record guitar, and then you've just got that guitar performance, and then I can run it out to an amp, yeah, and then you know, and then. If, I'm sure people who listen to this know reamping, but reamping is such like you can go down a Brian Wilson rabbit hole <laughs> if you if with reamping. I I I put a uh, before the lovesick bombs idea. I've, I've always just kind of 
contributed songs. There's a there's a band years ago that I I loved, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna write some songs. I'll pay for the recording of the songs if you guys go in and do them. And they were just happy to go in and record them, so I would get to kind of guest write into bands. Um, and I got to re I got to reamp for the first time, and ended up reamping like five times, just stupid. And I I was a part of it, like I criticized it, and I immediately became a part of it because you have that <laughs> yeah. that much control. Yeah, that's um, that's good stuff. I mean, yeah, it's it's wonderful though. Like it, as long as like getting a good sound is like the main point, and not just getting the cleanest sound, whatever. Yeah, you know, it's like. I feel like there's people who record shit and they're like more worried about what the sine wave on the fucking computer looks like than the actual sound sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah. Auto tuned, auto tuned bass. Yeah. You that's right. The bass is so tuned. You're like, that's not what a fucking bass sounds like. A bass has wobble. Yeah. Okay. For the bass to have some wobble. Right. The bass does not come out in straight lines on a computer. Yeah, that's right. Oh man, I could I could geek out. I feel like we I could geek out about this stuff for hours, but um we're, we're <laughs> no going problem. a little long here, so I should probably wrap yep. it up. Um just if you want to let people know uh where they can uh get get the I guess probably the website is the best place to go uh mention yeah. your socials and all that stuff. Sure. So uh, just lovesickbombs.com. There's a there's an original piece of art with the song and uh you know just a uh diy video for for everyone that's come out in the series um we're gonna put a, a bulk of songs out over the next six weeks to two months as i uh find artists a uh, big push for me right now um sorry to be a broken record is i'm um, you know i'm trying to find the diamond in the rough i'm hoping to find somebody who just knocks my socks off who hasn't uh taken the step into sharing their art and you know just kind of want to get behind that artist and and get their shit out tight and don't be afraid to fucking share your shit you know like uh i know i always ask people to fucking hit me up on the internet and they're like i don't know it seems like people are scared because as soon as i start doing a live stream i start getting questions and comments like crazy but you know like fucking put your shit out there people come on <laughs> absolutely absolutely hey hit me up next when you guys get back out on the road hit me up when you come to new york i'll show you some secret spots <laughs> absolutely will do buddy and that's it for the intruder green podcast i want to thank john again for being on it you can hit me up on twitter facebook instagram all at intruder green the intruder green calling line is plus one six oh eight five three five nine six oh eight give me a call anytime i probably won't answer but i will get back to you uh patreon.com slash intruder green if you want to become a uh, producer of the podcast the intruder green podcast is produced by colin bennett karen makeup by jenny smith set designed by dylan raymer Catering, Matthew Hendershot, Lighting, Squeak Lights, Rahway, New Jersey. Our theme song is Particles by Typhro. You're a wizard, Sam. You know, an artist name, like the artist formerly known as Prince. You'd be like the artist formerly known as John. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. I'll okay. take that. Ladies and gentlemen, the artist formerly known as John Redmond on the Intruder Green podcast. Of Wait, actually, let me redo that because I want to make sure I talk about Lovesick Bombs in the intro. I'm just doing an intro here.